Hello, I'm Naomi Foyle, Deputy Director of Waterloo Press. Welcome to the online launch of It Is About Love, the wise and graceful debut collection of Jocelyn Jones, which I was honored to edit. Here it is, beautiful book. And my own new pamphlet, Importents, my third pamphlet for Waterloo Press and my 10th in total. We enjoyed a beautiful live launch yesterday in Brighton with a bit of fizz. Uh, so it is the evening after the night before. Uh, and we planned this evening's event as a, as a less formal affair, a quiet weekend bookend, if you like. I'll be hosting Switching Hats from Publisher to Poet, and Jocelyn and I will introduce each other. The reading will last an hour with four short sets, including time for questions in the middle. It will be recorded, so if you don't want to appear, please turn off your camera, as I've just said, and ask questions in the chat. To make the event and the recording accessible to everyone, we'll screen the poems in the Zoom room. You should still be able to see the poet reading in a thumbnail window on the side of your screen. But before I do that, just as a sort of introductions, um, to continue the introductions, I began my poetry career self-publishing pamphlets, and you might be forgiven for saying that I'm still doing so. I would though like to thank the Waterloo Press director, Simon Jenner, for the invitation to publish Importance and for his warm encouragement of tonight's titles. Simon was double booked for tonight, but he sends his apologies and he wanted me to say how thrilled he is to be publishing both books. He's actually written, and this won't surprise you if you know Simon, a quite a long mini review of both books, which I will be publishing on the website blog because it's so nice. Uh, but I would like to quote it here in my introduction to Jocelyn. Of It Is About Love, Simon writes, I was deeply impressed by Jocelyn's poetic aura, for lack of a better term, her nimbus. It's inviting and deeply sympathetic. There's a lyric attention and grace which allows the best poems to emerge. Simon also talks about fillets of light, moments of revelation, chips of brilliance, and an admirable self-interrogation throughout Jocelyn's poems. I could not agree more. It gives me enormous pleasure to be introducing Jocelyn Jones, whose work I've admired since she started inviting me to her poetry salons here in Kemp Town. Jocelyn began her life on a farm in Sussex and has come full circle to live in Brighton and work as a homeopath. In between, she lived in the south of England and different parts of Africa, was married and has a daughter, Rose. In Africa, she met farmers and leaders who opened her eyes to the wider world and deepened her knowledge of the elemental and the human world. Her poetry arises from these experiences. And if I share my screen now, we will be able to see Jocelyn's poems. Over to Jocelyn. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that introduction. That was lovely. Um, I think I'll let the, the poems speak for themselves um, and not say any more. So, Drinking Sky. Can you catch a tiny slice of daylight when you greet the outdoor world? In a spacious moment, can you see what is there speaking to you all this time? If you look up, does the bright light illuminate the clouds? Do your open eyes eat drink? <laughs> Do your open eyes drink sky? Does the rain whip your cheeks sharp and cold as you walk? Can that be a mercy? If you look down, can you see the weed pushing through concrete to the sun? Small miracles bless the tired and the grieving. One's called Underground Angel. From my toilet cubicle in Euston Station, I hear music, high and fresh and beautiful. And in my, in my mind, I see a lovely girl, spirited and free, singing in a public space. Opening the door, I see an older woman, poor and ragged, taking water from the sink in bottles stained with use. And she sings again, pure and high and beautiful. Her face is tired and gaunt, 
her body thin, her dress threadbare, good clothes long worn, dirtied by the underground. Her voice tells the sp story of her spirit, pure and fresh and beautiful. A refugee from war seeking shelter underground in the maze of passages below London. I thank her for the beauty of her voice, the truth of her story, and sing deep from my belly the length of Euston Road. Running, jumping, pounding through my blood, a river of connection, shock and rage. And thankfulness for warmth and ease and gentleness, my roof and hearth, and her creative fire to still sing through titanic struggles of the mind, the stuff of daily life, the begging in the street, collecting water from a public toilet and singing like an angel underground. This is for my daughter. I longed for you long before you came to us. You found a single unlikely moment to begin this journey and arrived a tiny bundle with big dark eyes, making your cool reckoning on where you had been born and to whom. Thank you for your warm acceptance of my love, your simple hunger, a miracle after our long labor. Thank you for facing me with myself, for giving me my frailties, for growing strong and true, keeping the early promise of those wise eyes, of those wise eyes. And now I go back to my ancestors. I have apologized for a past I did not know. I have not owned the gifts of privilege and yet I have them still. Now I see more clearly, I am the child of much murkiness much that is unspoken still. My father's father and his eldest son, soldiers in the Boer War, aren't married in Bolueo, the town where I lived for two good years. Her children cared for by women of Africa, maybe with children of their own they could not hold. Dear friends have sown seeds of understanding and watered them with stories that I long to hear my ears are eager, but too full. So I will always be a fool and think I know, as you, my ancestors, thought you knew. And I see you in my dream, meet and greet, and stand together in my other land, my Africa, the motherland. Conflicts resolved by death and time, love uncovered by generations of generosity, of forgiveness, of willingness to teach those of us who wish to learn that we are the children of one great mother. The crab apple tree. The rain has stopped and the sky is cloud mottled. The crabapple tree grows bright red shiny fruit and shimmering drops of rain. Surface tension holds each moon sphere below its fruit. Held beyond what should be possible. Too round for a tear. Intact, shining, solid. Ready to fall but held there, defying gravity. Denying the liquidity of water. Father of my child, my much loved and long time husband, death is very near. Your inner will to live, your strong spirit held in equal combat with your body's slow letting go. darkening world. 
The worst that could be said is that you were hopeful when the times were dark and dawn is not yet coming. We are going into a darkening world. I feel it all around. I see it wherever I look. The hope is for the future when we may be long gone. But what can we do but live as with hope? Look despair in the eye and carry on. Keep on seeing the goodness in everyday people, in your own self, in all that you love. What can we do but carry on, seeing the beauty in this huge low October moon, in the gold and reds of autumn? And know that here winter is coming and the homeless will be cold. The despairing will feel worse. The burden of the chill will not yet take people to huddle round a communal fire. Rather, we will shut the doors, if we have doors, and insulate ourselves from all the dangers in the great outside. Outside the door, the family, the chosen few, outside our skin. Turn yourself, turn your eyes on yourself in kindness. See what I see, your courage to do a big thing in a thousand small ways and accept it may come to nothing. It is something to love so much that all the old are your father and mother, your fellows, your sisters and brothers, all the young, your sons and daughters, and all deserve what you can wrest from a cruel world. We leave an impression. You have no idea how many that you touched stood up another day to their hold li hard lives, enlivened by your care. Sorry, I'm looking. Ah, here we go. Ch changing the tempo a little. This was uh, in France before a vision quest. It's called Out at Night. Whoa, right before my feet, running big black pig, wild boar, snorting as they bolt across the path into the field of rapeseed. Some heavy set and huge, some tiny, running scared, staying with the herd. What a gift, so close. Me unseen, unthreatened by this power that could have tusked and trampled me. Gunshot echoes across the valley. A big bird cries. I walk some more out into the bright moonlight, far from the village, full of wild boar energy and joy. The thought of farmers out at night with guns and me unwary in my ignorance unsettles me. Collateral damage. Foolish foreigner found dead in a field. I have learned one thing. I am more afraid of humans than the dark or wild boar. This is about a very special evening on the Downs. It's called a fire on the Downs. The geese have honked loud and harsh across the sky. Piglets run squealing to their muddy mothers. The sky is pink, the night soft with love and friendship. Music plays around the fire. I am here and happy. And as I drop into this deep and tender space, my heart opens a touch too wide. And I feel the longing as my chest eases open. The morning dove flies free. And the last one for this set. Replenished. Bereft, but not resisting. Murmuring spoken only to the fire. Travelling swift over sea and sand, rock and tree. Sacred sounds in no known language. The smell of sweet pea and rose on the summer breeze. The roughness of the waves this windy night. The heat and tranquility of the fire. 
Three Women with Hearts Torn Open by Life and Death and Loneliness. I lost for a moment the truth of who I am. Here once more, summoned by your deep voice, I lean against the oak tree of your strength. You were always there with Grandfather Fire, so close I could touch you in the flames. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.